Congresswoman Edith North Rogers, a representative from Massachusetts, served in the American Red Cross during World War I and witnessed firsthand the struggles of women who had served with the Army to gain recognition and pension after the war. In 1941, it was becoming apparent that the United States was heading into yet another world conflict and that women's contributions would be crucial to victory. Rogers petitioned Congress to create an all-volunteer women's corps, planting the seed of what would become the Women's Army Corps. Congress rejected this bill and the idea of a women's corps until after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Following the U.S. entrance into the war, the bill was revived with several changes focused on creating a Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. Limitations on service, recruiting quotas, and privileges were established the women would be with the army, not in the army. On May 14, 1942, Congress approved Public Law 554, formally establishing the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the law the following day, and on May 16th, the very first WAC took her oath of enlistment. Ovita Kolb Hobby was chosen to be the first director of the WAC, Hobby had been involved with politics since the 1920s, had served as a newspaper editor, and most recently had been part of the War Department's Women's Interest Section. The Texans seemed a natural choice for the role and immediately began a recruiting tour of the U.S. Standards for joining the WAC were high. Applicants were preferred to have a college education, needed to be between 21 and 45 years of age, and complete several rounds of interviews and examinations. The WAC's recruiting also followed the regular army in limiting the number of black members. The ceiling was set at a maximum of 10.6% and would be segregated per limits made by the War Department in the 1920s. Because of this, the first training class of auxiliaries would be open to 440 trainees, 40 of whom would be black trainees. The War Department received thousands of applications for the first class and chose the top applicants to begin training at Fort Des Moines, Iowa in July of 1942. One of these was Charity Adams, a school teacher from South Carolina. Adams, by virtue of alphabetical order, was the first black whack to be inducted into the Corps. Following graduation from basic training, Adams and her classmates were commissioned as third officers a rank equivalent to second lieutenant, and immediately began training the next classes of future WACs. As training continued, WACs were graduating weekly from Fort Des Moines. Beginning in the autumn of 1942, the first WAC units were assigned to field duty. The 32nd and 33rd Post Headquarters companies were among these. These all-black units were sent to Fort Huachuca in southern Arizona, a former Buffalo Soldier post. Because of the War Department's policies, black women in the Corps stayed in segregated units through training and duty assignments. From the beginning, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was trying to fight sexism and prove itself worthy to its male counterparts. The WAC earned expanded service assignments and privileges and eventually shed its auxiliary status in the summer of 1943. However, its black members were facing a unique blend of discrimination, the intersectionality of sexism and racism. Throughout 1942, 1943, and 1944, there were limited requests for black WAC units, and malassignment was rampant. Black WACs even faced assault from their fellow service members. During this period, there was an initial request for a black WAC unit to be sent to the European Theater of Operations, but Hobby denied it, as the request was deemed insufficient. Here at Fort Oglethorpe in 1944, a WAC detachment under the command of Abby Noel Campbell was established. Campbell had served with Charity Adams at Fort Des Moines, and the two were fast friends. Their time in the service would come together again in 1945.